You are now watching Believe. Do you believe? Welcome in to Believe in Jaguars. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for being here. I'm joined, as always, by former Jaguars tight end Clay Harbor here on a Victory Tuesday edition of Believe in Jaguars. Clay, how are we doing today? Man, I'm feeling great. My Bears didn't lose. My Jaguars beat the, the hated Titans for the first time since I was playing, Jordan. They hadn't yeah. done that in Tennessee since, since I was back on the field. So this was good. It was great to watch. It was great to see. And our main man, Trevor Lawrence, has continued his dominating performance. Obviously, we're going to talk about that. And also, I have to say, you know, I always love it when a tight end has a big day. You know, shout out to my man, Evan Ingram, just getting it done. So a uh, fun day right now. We get to talk about a win, a big win against Tennessee, and and maybe even, you know, talk a little bit about play, playoffs. Playoffs? playoffs? You, you kidding? P- playoffs? <laughs> yeah. We will talk about the Jaguars' playoff scenario, and we're going to tell you point blank, do we think the Jaguars get in this year, in the year of our Lord 2022? <laughs> We'll see. It's it's a it's a wild ride this this NFL season. Absolutely no doubt about it. So you mentioned Evan Ingram, Clay. I gotta ask, did you like DM him some highlights from your playing days? Did you give him a call? Inspire this masterful performance, right? You know, eleven catches, hundred sixty two yards, two touchdowns for Evan Ingram. Were you his inspiration? He blocked well, too, man. I don't know what his inspiration was, but he just looked <laughs> fast out there. Like, watching the film, like, man, this guy, he just looked different than he did all season. Obviously, he's a, he's a fast player, but whatever he did, whatever pregame meal, pregame routine, I don't know, whatever you did last week, Sunday, do it again, Evan Ingram, because with Christian Kirk, Travis Etienne, and these weapons, we get a tight end that can do that, that kind of thing. Obviously, that's not a, a, something you can do on a week-in, week-out basis. But if he can do half of that consistently, yeah. then this is just – that's a huge addition for Trevor Lawrence and a huge weapon for the Jaguars. He, he's just a matchup nightmare with his speed, and that's why he was a first-round pick. The guy can run a 4-4 at tight end. If you treat him like a tight end and not like a wide receiver, linebacker is not going to be able to guard him. So I, I loved what I saw from Evan Ingram. He looked quick. He looked explosive. He caught everything. His hands were good. And even had some, he was even blocking well. Like, man, this guy, I don't know if he ate his Wheaties, Michael's secret stuff, if you ever watched Space Jam. But whatever mm-hmm. this guy did, it was impressive. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, he did start the game off with two, I don't think you would classify them as drops. But they were, you know, balls that hit his hand where it was, they were contested. Yeah. Um, so I was like, here we go again with Evan Ingram. And you saw Zay Jones drop a would be completion to like the one yard line or maybe even a touchdown. Um, I was like, here we go again. Yeah. But as you said, Evan Ingram, he cleaned it up. Zay Jones cleaned it up a little bit too, even though he's still, it's a little up and down, but certainly made one of the plays of the day in the end zone there, that toe tap, unbelievable play yeah, by Zay. Much. But um, Evan Ingram, a lot of it was just getting him in space, it looked like. Like, they were just clearing out space for him and letting him work. And I think that's exactly what you want to do when you have a tight end who can run the way Evan Ingram can run. Just get him in space and clear it out. Let him let him do work there. But then you also talk about uh, his second touchdown down the offensive left side, down the sideline. Uh, Trevor Lawrence puts it right at that front pylon. Evan Ingram goes up and gets it with both hands with the defender draped all over him, gets both feet down in bounds. That was really the play for oh, Evan Ingram for me where I was like, whoa. Yeah. This guy is – it's not just getting him the ball in space and letting him work, giving him easy catches. That was contested. That was difficult. I mean, that was a big-time, big-time play. Yeah, Doug did a great job of scheming some things up. I mean, you got the crossing route on the touchdown. You got you got a couple of things he schemed up to give him some some space. But obviously, Evan Ingram's got to be able. To, he's one of the better catch and run tight ends in the league, and I think that's because it's speed. He might be, you know, one of the. I think he is one of the fastest. He might be the fastest tight end in the league. But 
Thug did a great job of getting him in space, and Evan Ingram did a great job of, of catching and transitioning. That's something I always see when a guy is playing with confidence. If the guy isn't, he will catch it, and there'll be a little stall, a stutter, and then you go. With When a guy is playing with confidence, that's when you see the catch and a seamless transition into the run after catch, and that's what Evan Ingram was doing. And like you said, even had a couple big contested catches. So uh, everything was clicking for him. And I think this is huge um, going down the stretch. If Evan Ingram can continue on this trajectory of these last few games, four games, it would be a huge addition to the Jaguars' offense. And remember, he took a one-year deal. I mean, he's getting $9 million this year, which isn't a, a nothing contract. I mean, $9 million a year is great. But if he can continue on this trajectory, he might be in for a nice little payday. Put up a couple more of these games, you might be in for a nice little payday at the end of this thing and – I mean, I want to ask you, Jordan, uh, from what you've seen from Evan Ingram, and obviously, you know, this is an emotional decision because we just saw what he did help us beat the Titans in Tennessee. But would you bring Ingram back knowing it's probably going to cost you a little more? But is this a guy, after seeing what you've seen so far with four games left, that you want back on the team next year? Or would you rather maybe go out and get a different tight end? Yeah, I've thought about this a lot. And I think with Doug Peterson – you're going to want to have multiple pass catching options at the tight end position. I think you just are, even though you haven't seen a ton of Dan Arnold this year, I think ideally you'd like to have multiple pass catching options. I think if the Jaguars were able to figure out a way to keep Evan Ingram, whatever it is, he's going to be 29 next year. He's 28 right now. So, and the way he's moving, it doesn't look like he's about to break down or anything like that. I don't think he's in the twilight of his career. You know, some players, they hit the 30 mark and they just are done. I don't think Evan Ingram looks like that type of player. So from that perspective, I, I think you're in a good situation if you want to bring him back. I don't think he's about to lose his athletic ability. Um, so money-wise, though, like the good news is if you try to bring him back on a deal that's let's say three years, two, three years, you yeah. can kick some of the salary cap in 2023 down the road with a signing bonus. Yeah. So like this year, his entire salary counted against the Jaguars salary cap. He was a $9 million cap it. Yeah. But lot. even if you signed him next year to let's say a $10 million per year deal over three years, you could make that initial signing bonus for 2023 negligible. I mean, you could make that like two or $3 million if you want. Uh, and I'm, excuse me, not the signing bonus, but the cap hit in 2023. Yeah. And, and the you way saw- you're able to write these contracts. So if you're able to sign him to like a two or three year deal, 10 million a year. Yeah. And the salary cap hit in 2023 is low. I'm all for it, but that wouldn't be the only move I make at tight end. You need to bring in a young tight end to try to grow with Trevor in the draft. This is a super loaded draft class at tight end, in my opinion. And so I, Evan Ingram would not be my only move at tight end. And it's not going to be their only move because all three of their top guys are on expiring contracts. Yeah. I think the same thing. And this free agent class of tight ends isn't great. Usually Mike isn't. Mike Gusecki, okay. Dalton Schultz, Austin Hooper. You saw Ingram versus Hooper, you know, um, in Tennessee game. I think Ingram proved yeah. that he's a better tight end. He proved that he's better than than Austin Hooper. I mean, he can top. do a lot more for your offense from a passing game standpoint and Absolutely. from a sp- spreading the field out standpoint. So overall, I think he, you really got to consider bringing him back. And obviously, you can pick someone up in the draft, but there are some other holes that you got to fill and, and you're looking to do in the draft. I don't know if you want to use that on a tight end so to speak but uh i wouldn't i wouldn't be upset if they brought ingram back and like you said i don't think it'd be a big hit to the salary cap because he's making nine million this year and that's all you know that's all on the cap it's a bit nine million cap hit so they could do some things with a two or three year deal to to make that cap hit a little bit less yeah definitely and um Shad Khan's been known to do that. When you look around the league at a lot of these big contracts that get written, usually the Jaguars are, when they sign a big deal, it's usually a massive signing bonus, like some of the biggest signing bonuses around the league. So you can say a lot of things about Shad Khan, uh, but when his general manager or personnel director, whoever it has been, has said, 
or, or been like, look, we need to get this guy. He's been willing to write those big signing bonuses. And uh, so you got to give him credit for that. He, yeah. Shad Khan's checkbook and willingness to spend it has been a benefit for the Jaguars when it comes to pursuing free agents, no doubt about it. Uh, now, they are tight against the cap next year right now. I mean, right now, they would be over the cap entering 2023. They're going to have to do a lot to massage that. And will Evan Ingram and a new Evan Ingram contract fit within what they can do or what they feel comfortable doing this next offseason? That's going to be fascinating to me because he certainly has earned earned the right to be a starting tight end in this league again for the next couple years at least. I agree. So whether it's in Jacksonville or not, we'll find out. Again, I would be fine with them bringing him back as long as it's not like breaking the salary cap in 2023 and as long as they are going to pursue someone in the draft, which I think they – I'd be shocked if they don't, just based on, again, the fact that all three of their top tight ends are on expiring contracts. Um, Like right now, entering 2023, Luke Farrell would be their top tight end and their only tight end on the active roster. So – I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Sign them up. Clay's still in great shape here. Yep, let's do it. All right, so we've talked about Evan Ingram quite a bit here. Trevor Lawrence, Mm. four freaking touchdowns in Tennessee against the Titans, Jaguars' most hated rival, team that the Jaguars haven't beaten since 2019, haven't beaten in Nashville since 2013, and Trevor just goes out there and smokes them. Again, four touchdowns, career-high 368 passing yards. What an incredible display by Trevor Lawrence, who not only dominated the Titans on the field, but you know you see him talking smack after the final, the final whistle to the well, Titans fans. He gets pulled away from them by Mike McCoy. I mean, not by the Titans fans, but by the Titans players. And then he waves goodbye to all the Titans fans as they're leaving the game. I mean, this was as do all as it gets, right? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see him, man. And then obviously, first off, they're talking about Jaguars are the Titans' little brother and they never win in Tennessee. And I think Trevor just, you know, he was sick of that and he wanted to, you know, wanted to make a statement. And bye, guys. Have a, you know, have a nice day. At least you're at home. You know, we're going to travel to see you in a couple weeks. And Mm -hmm. he acknowledged that. He said, yeah, we're going to see these guys in a couple weeks. So, you know, it doesn't matter to me. We're, we're going to get another stab at him. He's confident, and he wants the – he even talked about the playoffs afterwards, talking about making a playoff run. So Trevor still believes there's a chance for them to make a playoff. So my question is, should should we believe it? Yeah. No pun that's, to believe. <laughs> believe in Jaguars. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and we'll tackle that question a little bit later. We'll keep talking about this game a little bit um, and what, what some of the takeaways are. But uh, Trevor Lawrence, I mean, the way he played in this game, I, to me it looks like, and I mentioned this before, I think that he always had the confidence that he could make the play. Yeah. I believe now he has the confidence that he will make every play. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to make this play. I'm supposed to hand it off to Travis Etienne on the one-yard line. Nah, I'll keep it myself. I'll stiff arm the linebacker to the ground. Make him question his entire existence. I don't know if you saw him crying in the locker room after the game. <laughs> but, you know, Trevor Trevor was that dude yesterday. And he's been that dude for about the last five games. And so this is a guy that is playing with extreme confidence, playing at an extremely high level. His receivers are getting the job done more often than not right now. And, and Yeah, and tight end, absolutely. And he's really doing it without a running game. Uh, teams, I think, over the last month decided, you know, Travis Etienne's not going to beat us. And they've been loading up against the run, and the Jaguars' run blocking has been pretty ugly. I mean, horrendous. You see them losing one on ones. You see them not just quite having the cohesion, not always knowing who they're supposed to be blocking. You see free runners getting into the backfield against the run, and that's never what you want to see. So the Jags need to work on fixing that. But at the same time, I think as Trevor Lawrence continues to roast teams, defenses are going to be less willing to try to stop the run in Travis Etienne. Yeah, it's it, looking at the game, I mean, there was nothing there for Etienne, and you feel bad for the guy because he couldn't even get started. 
he, he couldn't even get ahead of steam going. And he was taking some hellacious hits, and and that was tough. And, and the thing that was also concerning was he didn't make one catch. And usually, Doug, you know, okay, ETN's a guy that's struggling in the run game. Let's find a way to get him the ball. Okay, they're going to need Travis ETN down the stretch. Yeah. This guy, they gave him 17 touches for 30 yards, but find a way to get him a screen, get him out in the pass game. Obviously, you had a great – you didn't really need that. You had, almost, you had 370 yards passing. But I want to see him get Travis ETN going. If there's no space in the run game, this offensive line is doing a terrible job blocking, throw him a screen. Get him matched up one on one with the linebacker. Get him in the slot. Get him outside. See if it's man to man. They move. They put a linebacker on him. Move Etienne around. He's not just a guy. If you take him away in the run game, that he should be taken away for the whole game. That's, That's the very beauty true. of this guy. Get him the ball in the passing game. You know, throw get get him some some different looks. You can get him going. I mean, he's. I mean, he took a lot of hits. Played hard. Can't say nothing. There was just no space. All game getting stuffed. This team, as good as they are as a pass blocking team, they are that bad as a run blocking team. Yeah. Great pass blocking team. I don't know this, the numbers. I saw them yesterday. I wrote them down. But Trevor Lawrence is getting some great protection. Travis Etienne is not getting any space. So give yeah, him true. some looks in the run in the pass game. Get him going. Yeah, I think they do need to get him involved in the pass game more than they have just in general this year because you – Get him in space. I mean, you see what Evan Ingram's doing with space? Yeah. Travis Etienne would be doing a hell of a lot more with that space. Um, no, no slide against Evan Ingram, but Etienne's just faster, shiftier, and a better runner with the ball in his hands. Um, right. So, yeah, I think if you were able to do that, I, I don't want to blame them for not doing that in this game because everything they were doing on the offensive side of the ball was working for the most part from the passing concepts. Um, but, yeah, 32 rushing yards for Travis Etienne and 36 yards after contact. That is not good. That means the offensive line is allowing him to get hit way, way too early. Wow. Wait, 32 rushing yards and 36 yards after contact? Yeah. I didn't even know that was possible, but hey. Well, that means he's getting hit in the backfield. (laughs) That's wild. Yeah. So That's wild. Not great. Not great from the interior offensive line. Um, but still offense did great. Um, speaking of things doing a really good job, the pass rush came to life against the Tennessee Titans. You had Trayvon Walker working a three point stance a little bit more, looking a lot more productive, a lot more comfortable. Josh Allen was able to get in there for a sack late in the game on Ryan Tannehill. You had Arden key. You had Dewan Smoot, Foley, Fatu Kazi, everybody joining the party. You had, I mean, Shaq Quarterman, you know, (laughs) Okay, yeah. owing Derrick Henry on the sideline. Uh, yeah, it was fun to watch. Trayvon Walker, Arden Key, Josh Allen all have sacks. Trayvon sack, that strip fumble was great. I mean, that was a thing of beauty. He got chipped, and obviously he just beat the uh, the offensive tackle there with speed, but you got chipped. So for you to be able to take a chip and still get to the quarterback, even if the offensive tackle, you know, played it as bad as I've ever seen, you know, his chip chip wasn't great, but that's what he's got to do. He just used his athletic ability, nothing cute about it. And and he just made a play. And Trayvon also made some great plays in the run game. He made some, some big hits in the run game. And you saw how, how athletic and, and big he is. And Arden key has been having a nice season for the amount of stats he's been getting. You know, I'm a big PFF guy and, per pass rush opportunity. He's top 20 in the league in, in, in pressures per pass rush. So you love to see him getting some opportunities. And, and I think he's a guy that uh, that can be more productive than, you know, than he has been. He's only got three sacks, but he's, he's been great on pressures per capita there. And I think their whole defensive front can be more productive than it has been. Right. I mean, yeah. there's talent up front. Yeah, Devin Lloyd had you know he had eight tackles, but I'm still seeing some things, man. Where I'm I'm still not sure if Devin Lloyd is the guy. But surprisingly, you know who's play who's got a lot of hate over the years, who's actually playing pretty well. Andrew Winger. Do we? Yeah, I mean, yep. I you know I like this guy. He's flying around. He's making hits, and I know he's got a lot of hate over the years. 
but obviously this guy's a backup safety steps in and, and makes some plays. So that's, I mean, to me, he's been impressive. Yeah. He brings a really solid energy to the football field. I don't know that you ever want him as a full-time starter, but can he be a package player for you? Absolutely. In my opinion and do some nice things for you. Yeah. So, uh, Mentioned the pass rush. I am impressed with the pass rush, what they did. But I have to say, like, this was a game, if they were ever going to get the pass rush going, this was it. Because the Titans' offensive tackles are awful. Just really, really poor. And if you can load up to stop the run, which that's what everyone has been doing against Derrick Henry and the Titans as of the last five weeks, because the Titans just can't beat you through the air, really, consistently. Um, you'll have a chance to do what you need to do. And that's exactly what happened for the Jaguars in this one. But I, I don't want people to necessarily believe like, oh, the defensive front has turned the corner. They're about to be what we thought they would be for the rest of the year. I'm not necessarily expecting that moving forward because this was, again, one of the worst offensive lines in football from a pass protection standpoint. Yeah, so if you can get the Titans – and obviously we saw Derrick Henry just running wild early in the game. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. And I must say, I picked the Jaguars money line and all my friends were talking trash to me. And I go, no, they're going to win this one. And uh, I know when we talked, I said, you know, I might have to go with the Titans here, but I took the Jags money line and they paid off. No pun intended, but uh, if Proud you of stop, you. thanks. If you could stop <laughs> Derrick Henry and make them throw the ball, I mean, they did have it. I mean, Robert Woods had a decent little game, um, but th- they're not built for that with those offensive tackles, like you said. That's that's not what they want to do. They want to pound the rock. But here's here's the other thing, Jordan. Okay, obviously it's a big win for the Jaguars, but I mean, they only won by two scores. They had four turnovers, right? So how do you feel about that? Do you think if this team doesn't, if Derrick Henry doesn't fall, they don't have all these turnovers? Do they still win this game? I mean, this is kind of like that Philadelphia Eagles game with the Jags. You see, they can play with them. Well, the problem is the Jaguars fumbled the ball five times and gave it up. Right. So, for me, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm obviously big win. Trevor played great. You know, um, they couldn't get the run game going, but I love what I saw from Evan Ingram. I love what I saw from some of these receivers. The defense got pressure. But you, you look at the, the numbers, I mean, they still had you know, the defense. I mean, he gave up 254 yards passing and 137 yards rushing and, and 7.1 yards per carry. This wasn't a perfect game by any stretch. You, you, you kind of are lucky, not lucky. Obviously, it's a, it's a skill to, to force turnovers, and that's a big thing in football games, probably the biggest. But without those turnovers, does this team win the game? Yeah, I think it's easy to look at this game and say, well, if if Dewey didn't pick off that pass in the second quarter or if Shaq didn't force that fumble, do the Jaguars win? Do the Jaguars stop the Titans on either of those drives? Um, I think it's a reasonable question. I think probably there is an alternate reality out there where, yeah, the (laughs) Titans were able to win that football game. The multiverse, somewhere in the multiverse, the Titans won. Yeah, so I agree with you there, and that's something – to worry about but i will say they really did tighten up to steal the titans catchphrase <laughs> um after the first quarter like derrick henry was running all over them and then they kind of said nah we're done yeah. with this yeah uh, he only had two yards rushing in the second half and yeah. so i i'll give them credit and you have to give them credit for forcing the turnovers as well right um absolutely so yeah but maybe in yeah a different reality, the Titans won this game, but not in our reality, yeah. thankfully. So you mentioned Devin Lloyd. Yeah, thought he looked a little bit better. I still think right now, when Chad Moom is healthy, when he gets back from that ankle, he's the guy that needs to be out there. Yeah, so he's still just playing with a little bit more. Um, in my opinion, to me, it looks like uh, he's able to process what's happening in front of him a little bit quicker and react a little bit quicker. That's really all I'm seeing right now, uh, the yeah. big difference from Movement and Lloyd. I agree. I agree. I think that's uh, that's something you can tell. He doesn't seem like he's playing with with all all the confidence he needs to be playing with to be successful. And you'll see, and he'll flash a play here or there, but just the, the consistency's not there. And 
you know, this game has done nothing to curb my, you know, feelings for, you know, Mike, uh, Mike Caldwell. Because, I mean, they still gave up a lot of yards and obviously you only scored 22 points against them. But, you know, overall, I mean, I, I still need to see consistency and you be able to stop the run and not give up the big yardage that typically leads to um, points and makes it makes it tough. And down the stretch there, if they don't stop them in the last play, I mean, you might have the, the game, you know, might not be over there. And, yeah, it could have uh, got tight. Could have got tight at the end, but they pulled it off. So you got to you got to take the victory, celebrate the victories. But does this win make you feel any different about uh, Trent Balky, or you still got the same concerns with him as we did last week? Um, I haven't thought about it in terms of Trent Balky. I did think about Mike Caldwell. Mike Caldwell's stock has risen in my book a little bit from this mm-hmm. one, and it's not as much about. Um, necessarily the results but what he was willing to do yeah he was willing to start letting Trayvon Walker really rush a lot more with the three-point stance and you saw the results like that strip sack was not the only play that Trayvon made from the three-point stance yeah and now should you could you say well he should have been doing this months ago yeah you could say that um and that's a fair criticism and you also saw for the first time now Darius Williams playing on the outside the entire game Trey Herndon shifting into the slot. And I'm not saying that that's perfect. I'm not saying that's going to be a Super Bowl recipe with your left cornerback and your nickel cornerback there. But is it the the best, the highest ceiling that the Jaguars could have in 2022? I think so. I think Darius playing outside is a big upgrade over whoever it is, whether it's been Trey Herndon or Tavon Campbell or Chris Claybrooks or Buster Brown, whoever. And yeah, is Trey Herndon a little bit of a downgrade in the slot from Darius Williams? Yeah, I think he is. But overall, I think you have a much higher ceiling and floor with Darius Williams on the outside versus anyone else. Yeah, I think I think that's true. I think he did a good job with that and putting the players in the right positions to make some plays. I mean, and trust me, could I he have done that months ago? Yes. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. (laughs) Well, this make you mad. Don't go down there. Yeah. Yeah. So we're running out of time here a little bit. We were going to talk about Trevor Lawrence and where he ranks among the top quarterbacks, but I think we need to talk playoffs, baby. Um, Playoffs? We're going to talk about playoffs. Yeah. Playoffs. Playoffs? Some Jim Mora. Love it. Um, We're going to talk, do the Jaguars make the playoffs? We're going to make our predictions here. So the road to the playoffs, the Jaguars are five and eight. They're in second place in the AFC South. The Titans are seven and six in first place in the AFC South. Both teams have four games remaining, right? So if the Jaguars go undefeated over the next four games, which includes a win over the Titans in the final week of the season, then um, then they only have to have the Titans lose to the Jaguars in the final week and one other game. And the Titans' remaining opponents are at the Los Angeles Chargers, uh, at home against Houston, and at home against Dallas, and then, of course, the Jaguars. So looking at the Titans' schedule, all right, how many games would you predict the Titans win there? At Chargers this weekend... Probably, I mean, they, they, they probably could pull out two, but maybe one is all I'd give them. Yeah. I mean, let's just talk about the, the next three games, right? Because then you have the showdown with each other at the end. That could be for all the marbles. Do the Titans beat the Chargers in Los Angeles? I don't think so. I think the Chargers will be favored. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they should be. Who wins that game? We'll see. I would pick the Chargers right now. Mm-hmm. Uh Texans at Titans. Sure, you can take the Titans in that one. Yeah, easy. Cowboys at Titans. I think the Cowboys will be favored in that one. It'll be favored. They did just almost lose to the Texans, but I think they could pull it off. Yeah. So I think you're talking about the Titans probably losing two of the games before they even get to Jacksonville um, in Week 18. So if the Titans lose two games before that showdown in week 18, that means the Titans would be sitting at eight 
and eight. And that would mean the Jaguars would need to get to uh, seven wins prior to that final contest. Yeah. And they could potentially sneak into the playoffs at eight and nine as division champions. Wow. Right. And the Jags, they play the Cowboys this weekend. They're not going to be favored to win that game, even in Jacksonville, not by a long shot, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But with this scenario we're outlining, the Jaguars don't even have to win that game. They just need to win two out of the next three. Um, and then, of course, beat the Titans in the final week. They play at New York on Thursday night football. What do you think about that contest? Well, Mike White looks like he's got some ribs. I mean, obviously, they got some some big quarterback questions. But this, the Jets' defense is, is, is really good. The Jets, yeah. Jets' offense, not so good. It's been better with Mike White. But, I mean – I think that that's a game they can win. I don't yeah. think that, uh, probably looks like a coin flip to me right now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I so mean, we'll what happens with Mike White. Yeah, and then you're going to have to go to Houston and beat the Texans, a team that you haven't beaten anywhere. Yeah, since 2017. Wow, it's all right there in front of them, right? Yeah. So again, just to recap, if the Titans go one and two over their next three games. That means the Jaguars just have to go two and one to make that final game against the Titans on January 8th in Jacksonville for all the marbles in the division. Do you think they do it, Clay Harbor? That's a long shot, but I mean... It's really not that long of a shot, right? I go with my head or my heart here. My head tells me it's nice to be able to talk about this, but I mean, I think that that's, I mean, that's a tough task, but you know, my heart's saying, hell yeah, they do it. Yeah. We're making the playoffs. You kidding me? You see last week, we just crushed the Titans. Trevor Lawrence threw for 370, three touchdowns. Evan Ingram's the best tight end in the league. Foye <laughs> Lulicon's playing like Lawrence Taylor. Our D line is unbelievable. Yeah, we're going to do it. You know, I want to see him keep improving. And I think it's possible. Do I think they do it? No. Would I love to see him do it? Yes. Do I think there's a possibility? Yes. And that's what we're going to pull for. Yeah. There's absolutely a possibility. We'll see how it plays out. I I, I don't have them doing it. I have them going two and two, <laughs> which gets them to um, seven and nine on the season, right? Yeah. No, no. Two and two would get them to seven and ten. Seven and ten, yes. I'm getting confused because of the old, yeah, <laughs> the old, you know, sixteen game schedule. Now we're at seventeen. Yeah, so that would get them to seven and ten. Yeah, and uh, you know whether or not that makes you happy. I think finishing the season two and two that means over the last uh, back half of the season, basically, that the Jaguars would have been five and four to close out the season. I think you can feel pretty good about that going in to year two under Doug Peterson, year three with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I think so. I think they, they've definitely shown some things. And I feel like if you were to tell Duvall that Trevor Lawrence has turned into what he turned into and they missed the playoffs this year, and I'm not going to say there's still a chance, yeah. that they would be okay with that, to know that, hey, this really is the guy, and this is our guy, and this is the guy that we got for several years to come. And people would be happy with that. Yeah, I think so. And, um, you know, it's it's right there. The playoffs are right there in front of them. They can absolutely go take it. Uh, yeah. I don't think the Titans are going to put up a huge fight down the stretch. But counting out a Mike Vrabel football team has burned a lot of people throughout the years. So we'll see how it plays out, certainly. But we both have the Jaguars just not quite getting in, but playing better down the stretch and feeling good going into the 2023 offseason. So that's going to do it for Believe in Jaguars here today. Clay's going to hit you with a uh, with his you know his parting yeah. wishes at the end. We got to say a big win. Let's go, <laughs> Love it. That'll do it for us, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can hit me up on Twitter at Jordan Delugo Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag Clay Harbor at Clay Harbor at excuse me at Clay Harbs eighty two. 
he doesn't have his uh his tag here for me to read this time. Oh, sorry. But if you enjoy the content, if you enjoy Believe in Jaguars, please subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. Leave us a review. You can also check out YouTube Generation Jaguars YouTube page where you can see all these podcasts in video form uh, at Gen Jag on YouTube. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you all have a great day, Duval. Let's go.